Greetings, everyone. I'm Renee Strauss, and welcome to the Weddaways Advantage Travel and the Business of Weddings. We are so delighted that you're joining us for this series. Today, I'm joined by my business partner and wonderful daughter, Pamela Goldman, and industry insider, Kristen Seaholm of the KS Experience. Hi, ladies. Hi, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Wetaways is a dual-sided marketplace. Wetaways.com is a dynamic search engine featuring luxury properties around the world that cater to the wedding and honeymoon markets and a virtuoso affiliated travel agency led by Pamela and her team, focusing on the logistical bookings and travel needs for wedding planners and their clientele and consumers directly. Our services include venue sourcing, site inspection bookings, room blocks, ground transfers and excursions, and of course, honeymoons. In a nutshell, Wetaways provides the global wedding community access to luxury venues, and conversely, luxury venues access to the global wedding community. Travel and the Business of Weddings is sponsored by Viceroy Hotels and Resorts. And you'll find four of their beautiful properties on wetaways.com. Today, we're sitting in front of three of them. I'm in front of the beautiful Viceroy Sugar Beach in St. Lucia, and it's feeling good. Pamela, where are you? I'm at the relaxing Viceroy Riviera Maya in Mexico. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And <laughs> Kristen, where are you? I'm hanging out the beautiful Viceroy Snowmass just outside of Aspen, Colorado. Oh, it's so gorgeous. One lucky wedding planner who tunes in to all three travel and the business of weddings webinars will win three nights and four days with breakfast daily, a special dining experience for two, two spa treatments, and a special in-room amenity at one of the four Viceroy properties on wetaways.com. It is your choice. So stay tuned until the very end. We've got two more episodes after today and we'll announce the lucky winner. Kristen of the KS Experience is a longtime friend and colleague of Wetaways. And we are just thrilled to have someone in our universe that comes with 15 years experience in the weddings and event space and hospitality. So Kristen, from our family to yours, welcome. And we are just delighted you are here with us. Will you share with our viewers a little bit about yourself? Yes, thank you so much. And hello, everyone. Thank you, Renee, for the wonderful introduction. As Renee mentioned, my name is Kristen Seaholm. I'm an event consultant and owner of the KS Experience, and I strategize with event con companies to achieve their higher potential, as well as connect driven, passionate, and like-minded industry professionals to create a more successful collaborative experience for all, and in turn, an even stronger events community. Now, I absolutely love collaborating with Wetaways any chance I get, so thank you so much for inviting me to partake in this series. Not only are these ladies genuinely just amazing people, but they truly are the missing link for planners, venues, and your respective clients, acting as a trusted extension of your services, tackling the nitty gritty details that, let's be honest, let, we do not necessarily want to be spending time or money on. Contracting room blocks, attrition, negotiating room rates, not quite what we all signed up for when deciding to make a career in planning weddings. But with Wetaways being a virtuoso travel agency affiliate, they excel in exactly these types of services and have built amazing partnerships with venues far and wide, quickly building a reputation for putting everyone involved at ease. I cannot say enough great things about these ladies and just how important they are to the overall success of our community. Now, we have a lot to go over today, but before we jump in, I do want to touch on a couple of housekeeping notes. Please feel free to open up that chat box, say hi, tell us where you're tuning in from, um, and definitely be engaged throughout this. The more you're engaged, the higher chances you have of winning that Wetaways giveaway. And I will be taking care of that Q&A box as well, so send any questions you have our way, and we'll take care of those near the end of the webinar. 
And again, there is going to be a lot going on today, but do not feel obligated to take notes. Whataways will be following up with a link after each webinar for reference as well. Okay, now it's time to get down to business. We are kicking off this three-part series with every planner and couple's favorite part of planning a destination wedding, room blocks. As we all know, room blocks are an essential piece to every destination wedding, whether in a new and foreign country or just the next town over. But the where isn't what makes it any less complicated. Your guests are paying a pretty penny traveling to celebrate their loved ones coming together. And with that comes a level of expectation for how seamless and enjoyable the entire wedding weekend should be. In today's webinar, we're gonna tackle the ins and outs of room blocks. What exactly room blocks are, the differences between courtesy versus contracted room blocks. We'll demystify the difference between a couple or planner negotiating a room block versus a professional travel planner, such as, such as Wetaways, negotiating on your behalf. We'll talk about room block size, room rates, buyouts, all-inclusive room blocks, attrition, and then we'll finish up with secondary and alternative accommodations as well. Ultimately, we're gonna share with you how utilizing Wetaways white glove service will not only make you shine brighter, but simultaneously put time and money back in your pocket. All right, ladies, are we ready to talk about room blocks? Yes. <laughs> All right, so Pamela, do you wanna start with telling us a little bit about your experience room, with room blocks and wedding planners to begin with? Absolutely, thank you so much, Kristen. It's so wonderful to have you here with us and give your insight from the other side of things with so much experience as a hotelier with luxury hotels, including the Auberge properties in Napa Valley, Carmel Valley Ranch in California, and many more. Um, and of course, your industry insight into working with event planners around the world and luxury hotels around the world. So thank you so much for being here. Um, it's a great pleasure to be speaking to our wedding community about room blocks, something many planners dread until they start working with us. Um, as you know, I lead the travel team um, and I work with so many of you already, and I'm happy to see some new faces here as well, um, on your client's room block needs. So we are here for all of your client's room block needs. Um, I wanna take this opportunity to delve deep into this realm of room blocks. Uh, I'll start with some insight into what I've learned over the last years working with some of you amazing, talented planners um, and how historically wedding planners have undertaken room blocks until they've started partnering with us. Um, so what I have seen is that wedding planners work generally in one of two ways. They either take room blocks upon themselves and offer it as a service to their clients. Um, and of course, we hear often from you all that, that this is not your favorite part of the planning experience. Um, but a lot of times you'll offer the service and it will already be built into your full planning package that you offer clients. Um, or it's an extra that you provide to clients, but it's always something that you and your team take upon yourself, which can be daunting, of course. Um, you may give it your all and communicate very well. However, there are always some things that are going to be better when you work with wetaways and we have all of that buying power that can get you a little bit extra. Um, the second way we see planners working with room blocks is just not offering room block services at all. So if your clients have a need for it, you will just refer them to, maybe you'll give them a list of a couple of hotels in the area, but they'll have to do it on their own. Um, we understand that room blocks are on the list of the dislikes when planning a wedding uh, because the process can take a very long time, anywhere from 10 to 35 plus hours to source, quote, negotiate, and come to contract. And of course, connect with the client throughout the process. Um, and then when you're getting closer to the wedding, you need to manage the block. Uh, there's just a lot of logistics that go into it. Um, so we understand that it's not your favorite part and we are happy to undertake this process and work with you for the benefit of your couples. Um, the benefit, of course, of working with us is that it's gonna alleviate the logistics and allow you to focus on the good stuff, that design, planning, and production of the wedding. Um, so let us do the room blocks. I actually love doing room blocks, so we're all in luck here. Um, 
let me tell a you win win for everyone. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, let me tell you what a room block is. So simply put, a room block is a reservation of a certain number of rooms put aside for guests of your couple's wedding. Uh, generally, that's going to be 10 rooms for two nights minimum. Um, the minimums can vary based on the seasonality of the wedding. Um, or if it's a, a peak season at a high volume property um, or a holiday weekend, those numbers can change a little bit. Perfect. And why do you think that room block seems so daunting? Wow, um, it can be for a number of reasons. The, firstly, couples don't really understand what a room block is. So there's always going to be a bit of education in providing the service of a room block. Um, so you're gonna wanna explain to your clients what exactly a room block is. It is not an individual reservation at a hotel. Um, it does not have all of the flexibility of that, but there are tons of benefits. So you definitely wanna first have that conversation. And that's one of the reasons it can be daunting for a couple and a planner. So rather than you having to read about what a room block is, get information from a hotel, you know, do your own R&D about a room block, we can just very simply in layman's terms, explain what a room block is and what the benefit of a room block is. Um, so that's the first daunting part of room blocks. Um, also, there's a lot that goes into a room block, like how many rooms should I book? Um, what if my guests don't book within the room block? What am I responsible for paying? How many room blocks do I need at different properties? Uh, there are just so many questions that one doesn't initially think about when they say, I'm going to just get a room block for my clients at a hotel nearby. Um, so we want to make sure that these questions are are addressed before contracting anything. So there's never any confusion. Um, the worst thing that can happen is that a contract is signed, but there's still confusion. So we like to make sure that everything is very clear and go through all of those concerns before a contract is in place. Um, these daunting parts of room blocks um, are easily resolved with a conversation. So um, depending on the way that we work with you and your clients, um, many times we're working with you as a planner and providing you a white glove service. So you are gonna be that in between, between us and your guests, um, your couples, and sometimes we're working directly with your couples. So we're always going to give you some verbiage if we're working directly with you that you can pass on to your clients. So it's really very clear what we're doing here. Um, and then if we're working directly with your couples, we're going to have that conversation with them. Um, a lot of you are well versed on room blocks. We've been working together for years and you fill out our intake form. You've already given a little bit of background to your clients and it's really simple, uh, but we're always gonna still outline some of those terms that are really important for couples to understand um, when contracting a room block. Amazing. So diving right in then, um, contracted versus courtesy room blocks. Can you explain a little bit of the difference between the two as well as touch base about some of the benefits of a courtesy versus the benefits of a contracted room book? Yes, and this is a great question. Um, we do get this quite a bit. There are two types of room blocks, courtesy room blocks and contracted room blocks, and they are just what they sound like. So a courtesy block is um, a block of rooms set aside at a property with no financial responsibility attached to it. So if you have one room booked, zero room booked, all of the rooms booked, the couple is not on the hook financially if those rooms do go unbooked. Um, so that's what a courtesy block is. And that is pretty much the one benefit of a courtesy block. Um, so in our minds, it always sounds great to do a courtesy block because the couple doesn't have the financial responsibility, which is, we understand a huge part of room blocks and whether room blocks are a good fit for your couple. Um, but there are also downfalls um, and pitfalls that contracted blocks are 
um, going to mitigate and might be a better option for your client. So um, firstly, let me just say that many hotels do not offer a courtesy block. So if you're looking for a courtesy block in a very high volume area like Napa Valley, <laughs> Kristen, I'm sure you can tell us, um, you're likely not going to find one. Um, we're likely not going to find one because they are not offered because frankly, they don't need to be offered. Um, the properties have very high occupancy year round and don't feel like they need to keep aside some rooms that may never get booked. There is, you know, that there's a responsibility on the, on the property at that time um, rather than the client. So a lot of properties just won't offer a courtesy block at all. Um, if they do, there may be blackout dates that include holiday weekends, peak season, and other times of the year. So if your couples are getting married on Memorial Day weekend, Labor Day weekend, which so many of them do, you're likely not going to find a courtesy block in some of these higher volume areas. Um, and then, of course, the rates um, are not going to be as good as a contracted block. So um, really, and I'm going to go into that in a moment, but really the benefit of a courtesy block is for maybe couples having a local wedding with not many out-of-town guests um, or just not many guests that they anticipate would stay at a hotel. Um, and if they're just really cautious and they don't want to take the responsibility upon themselves, that's when a courtesy block is going to be a great fit for your couple. And we will advise that when we hear a little bit of the a little bit about the wedding. Um, contracted blocks are going to give you access to better rates, a larger number of rooms that are able to be blocked, um, which is needed for mo most, if not all, destination weddings, but also local weddings because we see um, trends of lots of out-of-town guests coming in. So a lot of times a contracted block is going to be necessary, even if you're having a local wedding. Um, and then, of course, many times contracted blocks, um, when we negotiate a contracted block for you, um, we will be able to negotiate a reduced resort fee, parking fee, um, sometimes the waived fees. So these are things that you want to keep in, in, in your mind when making a decision about a contracted versus a courtesy block. Um, just to touch on courtesy blocks once more, courtesy blocks generally have a maximum of 10 room allowance um, for a maximum. Yeah, if you can get that. <laughs> if you can get that, exactly. If you can get that, it's going to max out at 10 rooms for two nights. Um, so that's really important because if you're having 180 guests at your couple's wedding and 90 of them are from out of town, not everybody's going to be able to stay at the same hotel if you have a courtesy block. And one of the beauties, as we all know, of these amazing celebrations with out-of-town guests is that everybody can be together. Um, so it's really important to keep that in mind. Contracted blocks, um, of course, you are on the hook. Uh, couples are going to be responsible for filling a minimum number of those rooms, but the benefits really do outweigh um, the pitfalls when you're looking what we need more than eight to 10 rooms. Perfect, absolutely. And when it comes to contracted room blocks, what would you say are some of the more important points that you need to look out for? Yeah, so um, there are a couple of points you wanna look out for in a room block contract, which we will bring to your attention as well. Um, and the first is the cutoff and the release date. So whether it's a courtesy block or contracted block, there is always going to be a cutoff date of when your guests can make reservations for your wedding. So generally it's 30 days prior to check-in. Um, sometimes with a contracted block, it's going to be more like 60 days prior to check-in because the hotel wants to have that extra buffer time to sell those rooms since nobody is responsible for them. So another benefit of a contracted block is having these additional 30 days, sometimes more, for your guests to book. Um, we all know that there are some last minute attendees of weddings, so you want to give them the opportunity um, to book at that contract rate. Um, so you want to really be cognizant of that cutoff date. So, and, and that's really important to reinforce to your guests. We will always suggest that you let guests know that's about 14 business days 
before the actual cutoff date. So it gives those stragglers a little extra time to book. Um, and then that cutoff date is also going to be the same date as the release date, which means whichever rooms or how many rooms have not been booked yet, the additional are going to be released to the general public to book. So they're no longer in your bank of rooms, um, which is another really important reason to let guests know that the cutoff time is actually earlier than what the contract says to make sure that guests are really booking. Um, the second thing that you really want to make sure you're reading with a fine tooth comb on a contract is attrition. So we're gonna go into attrition a little bit later on because that is a beast on its own, um, but the attrition policy is super important to make sure you know the ins and outs of because that's going to tell your couple what they're responsible for in the end. So um, if attrition, if your attrition rate is 90%, um, that means that you have to fill 90% of the room block. Um, so that's an important number to keep in mind as couples are letting guests know about booking hotel rooms for their wedding. So they can kind of keep in mind how many more rooms they need by X date. Um, so something really, really important to keep in mind. Um, and then we also will update you or your couples on how many rooms have been booked, how many rooms are left, so you know what's coming down the pipeline. Um, very, very important. And then the third thing to keep in mind, especially now, is any inclusion of a force majeure clause um, or postponement cancellation clause. So especially now with the uncertainty of events and numbers in the future, um, you wanna make sure that there is some inclusion that gives some flexibility to the couple. Um, so not every property is gonna include cancellation without penalty. Oh, if you don't have the wedding here, if you don't have the room block here, no problem, you can cancel your 50 rooms for three nights, no problem. Um, that doesn't happen at every hotel. However, there are leniencies because it's just such an uncertain time. Um, so postponements are often made available with first right of refusals on dates for the following year. Um, some cancellation leniency like drop-offs closer to the date if we see things changing in policy. Um, and then some properties will include a cancellation. So they'll allow you to cancel based on events that are out of anyone's control. So it's very, very important to really read that clause carefully. I have a quick question, if you don't mind me asking, interrupting. Um, it, it sounds like um, many of these properties are um, in the US or Mexico, like the bigger properties. Are, is it the same everywhere you go in the world when it comes to room blocks? And so the um, so room blocks are generally the same anywhere in the world, but there are going to be some nuances that will be different depending on the country um, and depending on some policies of different countries. So a room block, for instance, in Morocco may look a little bit different than a room block contract in Mexico. Um, the, and it's just small nuances, but generally what the couple needs to worry about is the same across the board, um, which is, you know, the cutoff and release date, number of rooms, um, the cancellation postponement force majeure clauses and all of that good stuff, that's going to be the same. There are just some small nuances about, let's say, in-room allowances, like alcohol in your room from uh, brought in from outside, um, and some small little details like that, that may differ depending on the country of the room block. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to just touch on two more points very, very quickly. Uh, very important, you want to be aware of anything that may say a deposit is due. Um, very, very common with a room block, a contracted room block, because the hotel needs to have some guarantee in the event that the rooms are not booked or lots of things get um, billed to the master account. They need to have credit card on file. So couples need to be aware that they will be paying a deposit and it's not going into thin air. It will either be used for their room, their master account, whoever they want to pay for, or it will get refunded after the cutoff date. Um, so very important to keep that in mind. And then of course the room rate. So you want to look at the room rate, make sure it's the same as has been quoted, which of course we look over and make sure it's all 
well. Um, and then the pre and post night allowances, which we'll also going to work out for you wherever possible is the rate being um, allowed for a couple of pre and post nights. So if your guests are making a whole trip out of it, they're gonna have access to that discounted rate for a little bit longer. Hmm. Perfect, amazing. And that leads kind of perfectly into um, room block size. Um, is there any rhyme or reason to know how many rooms someone should be booking for their room block? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's kind of like a math equation, which I know we don't all love. Um, but um, yeah, so we, we definitely want to know a couple of things about the wedding before we go to room block contract. Um, number one, how many guests are you inviting to the wedding and how many do you anticipate coming? Um, we hear from a lot of couples or a lot of planners couples that will say, oh, we need 75 rooms um, for three nights. And I will say that's fabulous. We love it. How many uh, people are on the guest list so far? And they'll tell us 150. Um, so we will, of course, take a step back and say, okay, let's talk about numbers. You're inviting 150 guests. We do not want to block 75 rooms because firstly, there are definitely guests that are not going to be attending, but also you are on the hook if you're blocking that many rooms. So um, we are going to take the guest count. Um, we're going to do our own little math based on our many years of experience with room blocks and how many guests will book. And we, of course, consider all things like alternative housing. Airbnbs, um, you know, VRBOs for a bunch of guests booking together, alternative accommodations in different price ranges for different guests. Um, so we take all of that into consideration and then we'll advise on a number of rooms that are going to be the best number to book. Um, Sometimes it's more than the couple gives us initially, and we let them know, you know, you want to block X number of rooms because in the event they all they all uh, fill up really quickly, your guests are left with nowhere to stay. Um, so it's another, it, it is a benefit to have a contracted room block 100%. It's more of a benefit than a courtesy block, but we do need to be careful about how many rooms we're booking. Um, and then when we do get to a really great number, uh, we'll go to contract with that and couples can feel really secure in knowing that all of their guests have where to stay and they're all paying the same rate. Um, which is something that we hear a lot. We don't want, I hear a lot from couples. We don't want our guests paying, you know, 500 here and 350 here. That's what's great about a room block is that the rate is standard. So unlike a hotel, you know, best available rate online, which fluctuates literally on the daily, um, this rate is going to be fixed. So your guests are going to have access to one rate, you know, Uncle Jim and Aunt Pam and um, Cousin Sally are going to be paying the same rate. So it's, it's a benefit. And we will, of course, let you know how many rooms um, are going to be the best to book. Perfect. Perfect. You know, I, I have another question. I know. Oh, yeah. Please. Ask, I mean, and this is um, just something that came to mind listening. Through all of this last four month period with all of these room blocks and the upheavals, postponement, cancellations, rebookings, um, your contact at a property, um, if you were just like a, 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 a couple that was getting married or a wedding planner um, with all that responsibility and you would have to be doing this job right now and even going forward because we know that the big hotel chains are announcing huge layoffs in the next few days, how how has it been with your contact people at the properties with all of these details? So um, I think that, I don't think I know, one of the greatest benefits of working with us at a time like this, which hopefully is once in a lifetime time that we're going through, um, is that we have contacts at all levels of an independent boutique hotel and a big chain. Um, so we really do have different contacts to reach out to in the event that a staff member has been furloughed or unfortunately laid off, which has happened so unfortunately way, way too often um, and is gonna continue uh, unfortunately down the road. Um, but we do have multiple contacts. So it's never gonna be a situation where we come back and say, hey guys, we can't do the room block because we do not know 
who to contact, who's at the property anymore. We always will find someone. Um, and also because we are virtuoso affiliated travel company and we're in the travel industry with a you know certified IATA, um, hotels actually reach out to us when they have a changing of the guards. So they'll tell us, you know what, this sales director is no longer here, unfortunately, for the time being. This is who's going to be the replacement. Um, so that happens a lot, especially with the bigger properties. They're going to actually just reach out to us, whether we have a block there currently or not, because of the experience we have with them and because our name comes up in all of the databases when you search travel companies. Um, so it's a huge benefit that we get reached out to and we are um, informed when something changes on property. Um, and then, like I said, we do have different reps at different uh, parts of the company. So we will make sure that if all, the whole sales team is furloughed, which has happened, the entire sales team has been furloughed. Um, we're going to work with the GM, we're going to work with the managing partner, we're going to work with somebody to get your needs met, um, because that's really, really important. And it's a benefit of working with a luxury travel company like Wetaways, especially with us because we have a name in the wedding industry. So they know that we're working on room blocks and buyouts and wedding related stuff. So they really do keep us informed and they open our emails and answer our phone calls. Um, but unfortunately it does happen and it's happening a lot right now and hopefully it will get better in the next year. But um, we do have a contact and you're never going to be stranded. Um, actually, a lot of planners have reached out to me this last five months, four months about um, weddings that they are starting to plan at properties and the wedding contact has has just gone silent. Um, so it's even before the room block comes into play sometimes. And we have helped them connect with somebody on property because it can be difficult. So, you know, if we're working with you, it is our pleasure to connect you with who you need to be connected with. We, the, the worst thing is for your couple to think that you're going silent. So we're here as your partner. Thank you. Amazing. So you touched base in there, um, you mentioned buyouts. Um, now, I know buyouts, especially in California, Napa Valley specifically, it's incredibly difficult to get buyouts at hotels over weekends. Yeah. Um, but tell us about your guys' experience with buyouts, um, you know, worldwide. So firstly, we love buyouts. I mean, it's a great um, experience for the wedding weekend uh, because everybody is together or most people are together and you have full reign over the property. So your couple are kings or queens or king and queen for the weekend, which is like the best feeling ever. I mean, all of the guests rave about that experience because you go to the pool and all you see are familiar faces, which is amazing. Or you can, you know, have a pool party with like a DJ and it's all about you. There are no onlookers. It's just like a fantastic way um, to host a wedding. Um, and buyouts, we do them all over the world. Yes, for sure. There are places like Napa Valley, um, Aspen, some other places that we work where it can be difficult to have a buyout on certain weekends. And there are definitely blackout dates. Holiday weekends are blackout dates, high season, many blackout dates on high season. Um, what we do encourage if it's a buyout and it's going to be a multi-day event is weekday buyouts, um, which work, you know, to the couple's benefit in a variety of ways. The first is that you get to have the buyout. Um, the second is that the rate can be really lovely during the week um, because, it, you know, if it's a low season or even if it's a high season during the week is usually going to have a lower occupancy. Um, so if we, they can block out the property for you, you're going to get a better rate. Um, we always suggest buyouts are organized at least 12 months in advance um, because there are some properties around the world where returning guests come the same week every year and hotels are something we love about the hospitality industry um, is that hotels are going to honor that guest, even if it's just one guest that comes yearly, because it's it's such an honor for a guest to return to a hotel on a yearly basis, since there are so many choices in this world for unbelievable hotels. Um, so we want to make sure that we're doing it at least 12 months in advance, preferably 18 months in advance. Um, and then the room block negotiation 
the buyout negotiation works in the same way as a room block negotiation. So we're taking the whole property. We're going to make sure that your guests are getting the best rate if they're paying their own way. Um, the couple can choose to host the entire guest count, which is fabulous if they have the ability to. And if not, the hotel can break up the rooms uh, individually. So your guests can pay just for their rooms. I mean, it used to be complicated to do a buyout and now it is seamless because everybody has their CRM systems and it's just really easy. Guests just pay for their rooms and that's it. Um, and then there are some benefits of buyouts. Like, of course, like we said, you have all of the outlets to yourself. So king, king, queen, queen, king, queen for the weekend or the week. Um, and that also means that many times venue fees are extremely reduced if not just comped altogether um, because you have the whole property um, and nobody else is going to be in that restaurant or that pool deck or their private beach uh, that you will have access to better venue rates um, and then certain properties um, that you may choose that for your clients or offer to your clients for a room block uh, for a buyout um, your guests can actually pay for their individual rooms and it will cover a lot of the experience um, at that weekend. So it could actually cover like an entire rehearsal dinner, um, depending on the property, because you have a buyout and your guests have paid into it. Um, so there are definitely different properties um, that work in different ways for buyouts, but it's absolutely something to consider if it's a, either a boutique, smaller property, um, or if there, it's just a really large wedding. We always encourage it because it's just gonna make for a fabulous experience. Absolutely. And a little sidestep from buyouts. What about all-inclusive room blocks? How do those work with EIs? Yes. Okay. All-inclusives are really wonderful. So we used to think um, of all-inclusive as like a dirty word uh, or a dirty hyphenated word, but it is not um, anymore. Um, uh, all-inclusives, especially in or primarily in Mexico and the Caribbean, uh, can be fabulous for your couples. So, if so firstly, most of the time, um, the caliber of the wedding planners that we work with, all of you on this call, um, the, the wedding will be hosted at an outside property, um, but guests will be staying at, all, at an all-inclusive nearby. Um, so I'm just going to take Mexico for an example that has a plethora of all-inclusive resorts. Um, it's really fabulous because it takes the pressure off guests and they just pay one price for their room and board, um, which is amazing. And if you meet certain minimums uh, at an all-inclusive resort, then there are going to be a lot of concessions that are offered. So you may actually earn a free cocktail event. So even if you're not hosting the wedding on property, you can still have a fabulous cocktail event for guests that are staying at the all-inclusive. And, and if you're not staying at the all-inclusive as well, um, so there are a lot of concessions. You can earn free rooms, um, upgraded rooms, lots of different things at all inclusives, which is why we do encourage if your couples are considering a wedding in a country that has good all inclusives, it's not every country, but in a country that does have great all inclusives um, and they want to make it easy for their guests, maybe a little bit more budget conscious, but sometimes even not, um, we will, let you know about the all-inclusive options and encourage that to, as a way to go. Uh, it just really takes the pressure off. Um, and then of course, we work with the property directly or through a wholesaler that works only with travel companies. Um, and we have a lot of buying power ourselves and working with a wholesaler will multiply that um, and also offer a couple of more benefits. Perfect. based on the needs of your couple, uh, but there are really fabulous, fabulous all-inclusives definitely to consider. I love it. Yeah, I'm not used to all-inclusives, so it's really cool again to learn a little bit more about just how far along they've come over the years. Totally. I mean, all-inclusives, like I said, used to be this kind of um, dirty word in the industry because we're a luxury company. We work with all luxury planners, so it's like, what is this all-inclusive? But there are really beautiful luxury all-inclusives. Um, so definitely not something to throw out. No, perfect. Now we've touched a little bit on room rates and I'm gonna bring us back there now. Um, with contracting room rates, 
Do you find that the run rate will differ uh, from if a client or planner is negotiating versus if, let's say, you guys are obtaining that room rate on their behalf? In short, yes, um, the rate will be different um, for a couple of different reasons. Number one, um, if the couple or the planner is going directly to the property, the property might know the planner because, you know, you may have worked there several times in the past, but um, because you're not a travel advisor, agency, consor consortium member, um, you may not know all of the ins and outs of a room block. So, and you may not know to that the first offer may not be the best offer. So um, the first offer you get, you may just go to your clients and that's understandable because you're not a travel um, advisor or agency. You are a talented wedding planner and designer. So why are you going to spend so much time doing a room block for your guests, uh, for your clients? Um, that's number one. Off the bat, when a property sees us, they're not going to mess around with the rate. They're going to give us a, a good rate up front, but we're always going to dig deeper into the rate. So sometimes the property will say, this is the rate, this is the minimum night stay. And then the wedding planner or the couple will say, okay, great, you know, that's what it is. But we ask all of the other questions, like what's the attrition uh, policy for this? Um, what's the resort fee parking? And we'll always negotiate all of those things to make sure that your couples are getting the best option. Um, so that's for sure. And then we do have buying power. So we work with some of these hotels over and over again. And even if we don't, because we belong to this consortia, we do have a certain cachet and um, hotels know it when we reach out to them. So, you know, we, we always smile when we're doing it, but we will always make sure that you are getting the best for your couples and we'll, we always go to bat. Um, I just want to share with you that there is a resort down here in uh, Southern California that was recently purchased from another big brand company. Now they're an independent, but they're huge. They have 400 rooms and they just went through a $40 million renovation. And I did a site inspection there yesterday. Everybody was fully masked and it was like full protective gear. And um, it's a new person in the events department. And uh, I, so I did the site inspection and I asked her what wedding planners they're working with. And she rattled off a few names of which there were some in there that work with us, but a couple are new to the space. And I asked her there, um, when they do weddings here at the property, who does the room blocks for them? And they told me, uh, the, the family usually does it for themselves. And then the person that gave us a site inspection left and I was with one of the property representation companies who invited me to see the renovation. And he was sharing with me and I was sharing with him that these families that do it on their own have no idea what they're missing. And I just thought to myself, wow, you know, they could, yeah, of course, it's a beautiful property. And yes, it's a resort. And yes, it, it's overlooking, you know, the Pacific Ocean. It's got all of these bells and whistles. But if they worked with a professional that would do this job for them, they, their experience exponentially would be improved. And they would be so indebted to the wedding planner that introduced them to the professional travel company because that collaboration is just, it, it's so valuable. And I, I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to bring that up because I experienced it yesterday and you're talking about it now. And I mean, it's true over and over and over again. Yeah, and I'll just um, follow that up very quickly and say, uh, yes, the properties appreciate when we're involved. Um, they appreciate that we can explain everything to the couple because frankly, a property representative that's working in the sales department, which is off, oftentimes, usually 90% of the times, the, a different person than you're gonna be working with in the catering department for the wedding, um, they don't, first of all, want to explain anything um, further than just the words on the page. Um, but also it's very time consuming for them. They are not as quick as we are. Um, time is not of the essence for them. So they appreciate us coming in and you know explaining everything in full so they don't need to go into all of the nitty gritty of what is included in this room block. Um, so much so that some properties have actually um, 
partnered with us and we have taken over their room blocks completely for them. So they don't even speak to planners or couples directly anymore. They reach out to us when they have somebody looking for a room block and then we do everything for them because it's just so much easier for them. They truly appreciate it. It's one of the reasons that they're also willing to do more because they are saving so much time and you don't want, and you can't forget that they are paid by the hour. So the more time they spend, or even if their salary, you know, they're spending a lot of time on this. Um, to have somebody that knows what they're doing is just a huge benefit. And Kristen, I'm sure that you can speak to that at the Bears property. Uh, absolutely, 100%. It was, is, you know, as, as much as you love being in sales or you love being in catering, it's, it's tough with room blocks because you want to get past and you want to move on so you can get to the nitty gritty of planning and, and really getting into the fun side of it. And so when you're trying to explain all this lingo with the room blocks and it, it just, it's confusing for everyone involved. So to be able to talk to professionals who understand the lingo and love talking about it, it's just so much easier and more efficient to be able to work directly with you guys and know, okay, I, you know, I can have a 10 minute conversation with you guys, figure it all out. And then you can go back to the client and really, you know, spend that extra time and energy getting them to fully understand it. So I can go on to the next thing with my next client and keep on going. So it, it really is a win-win on both sides for sure. Um, and that leads so nicely into our favorite topic of room blocks, um, attrition. Uh, Pamela, you mentioned this slightly at the very beginning, and now we're really going to dive into it. Um, talk to us about what exactly attrition is, um, what the standard is in the industry, are there different types? Give us a lowdown. Attrition, so absolutely crucial when talking about a, a room block. Um, Simply, hotels implement an attrition policy for all contracted room blocks. Um, so the attrition penalty is in place should the event use fewer guest rooms than initially reserved in a signed contract. Um, so if we block out 10 rooms um, and the attrition rate is 90%, which means we have to fill 90% of those 10 rooms, um, then if you fall below filling nine rooms, you are going to be responsible financially for those additional rooms. Um, so it, it's either called an attrition rate at 90% or an allowance of 10%. Um, so it's, it can be termed in either way. Um, standard in the industry has historically been 10% allowance rate, so 90% attrition policy. Um, right now, we are able to many times negotiate that attrition, get it down um, to either an allowance of 20% or work out something else, um, you know, maybe a closer cutoff date to the event. Um, we do have a little bit of leniency right now, not at all properties, but at many. Um, so attrition, there are so many components of an attrition that just you don't think of when you are working on a room block. Um, there are generally three ways that a hotel calculates the attrition and the drop off and pick up. Um, and it will of course be clearly spelled out in the contract, but in legalese and hotel speak, so it can be a little bit confusing. Um, the three ways are cumulative attrition, per night attrition and revenue attrition. Um, so one of the other factors that we take into account when dealing with a room block, particularly at a very strict property that's got tons of business year round, will sell out and doesn't really frankly have doesn't need to negotiate that much. Um, we're always gonna try to negotiate the attrition and the way that the attrition is calculated. Um, so we like cumulative the best. Um, cumulative just means that the room pickup is going to be based on the total pickup for all of the nights and dates contracted. Um, so if you have uh, 10 rooms per night, let's say, that's and you have it for three nights, the room block, that's 30 nights, um, 30 room nights, and your attrition is at 10%, that 10% uh, drop off, that means that you need to fill 
nine rooms per night. That's 27 rooms overall. Um, but let's, let's say that some of the guests are only coming for two nights, but those two nights that they're staying actually make up for the entire minimum. That's going to be what a cumulative is. So you don't need to reach the nine rooms per night. You need to reach the 27 rooms overall. Um, that's going to be really beneficial, especially if there are going to be pre and post nights in the whole mix. So if somebody's making a weekend out of it, that's fantastic. Those rooms that we call buffer rooms are going to be included in that overall cumulative count. So that's a great way to factor attrition. And a lot of properties don't off the bat offer that type of attrition because that is going to be a more of a benefit to the couple than it is to the hotel based on revenue. Um, but we will always try and go for cumulative attrition. The other and most standard attrition policy is per night. So that's what we've discussed already. So nine rooms per night for those three nights. And it's just very clear cut and easy to understand. Um, and then the third room is attrition based on revenue. So your room pickup is based on the hotel calculating their expected room revenue on your contracted block uh, by basically just multiplying the number of rooms per category by the respective rate for each category. So a lot of times what we're going to do is we're just going to advise booking the entry level room category um, for guests and then with the option to upgrade to a a higher category room. Um, but the reason why that's the best way to do it is because then the attrition revenue is going to be based on that entry level room and not on an upper room category. So meeting the minimum revenue is going to be easy if you have guests that are going to upgrade to a better room, um, especially factoring in if the couple is staying at the hotel. Generally, the couple is going to stay in an upgraded room. Um, maybe they'll have one of those room one of those room nights comped, but they'll pay for the others, um, and that's going to factor into that minimum revenue. So the revenue attrition is basically just meeting the minimum anticipated revenue that the hotel has on your contract. Um, there's still going to be an attrition percentage of drop off. So the revenue will be based on that nine rooms per night for three nights. Um, that example that we were taking. So that's the third way. Again, cumulative is our favorite because you can really factor in those pre and post. Um, revenue is going to be the second best way to calculate a room block. And then the per night is going to be our least favorite, but most common. Perfect. And we do have a question on that, um, a little follow up question, which I think is a great one that came in. Um, so the question is, when we work with Wetaways, will you be able to work with each of our couples directly to explain and answer all of their questions regarding attrition, et cetera, based on their individual blocks? Absolutely. I mean, it's absolutely crucial that couples understand attrition because this is directly linked to what they're going to have to shell out um, at the end of, you know, everybody booking their room. So we are more than happy, in fact, encourage a conversation directly with the couple if that's the way that you'd love to work um, or a, a, a conversation with you as the wedding planner um, and then followed up by written verbiage. So you can pass that on as well. But it is super, super important that everybody knows what the attrition is because and, you know, what the responsibility is, because, um, of course, there are going to be times where we get closer to the cutoff date. Um, maybe there are rooms that went unbooked and the couple is not going to be thrilled that they need to shell out money for those rooms unbooked because nobody gets to stay in those rooms. Um, so it's really important to explain all of that. Um, and we can, we have phone conversations with many, many, many couples, um, but we also will follow it up in email because it's important to have a written reference as well. Um, and we encourage planners to do the same, have a conversation with your clients if we're working through you, um, but also follow it up in writing uh, because, you know, I call it wedding planner, wedding planning brain, like pregnancy brain, like you forget just things that are going on. Um, so having that written backup is going to be really important. But yes, absolutely, we're going to explain the attrition policy and what that means for your couple in terms of responsibility. Wow, perfect, amazing. And we have another question that came in, another really great question. Um, so if a planner wanted to work with Wetaways on room blocks, 
Do you work anywhere, even in places, locations, and properties that are not listed on your website? I am so glad that this question was asked um, because I didn't touch on it. Um, absolutely, yes. So we work in any country, all over the world, um, and at any property. Of course, our specialty is luxe and luxury. So uh, we love to help you with five-star properties anywhere in the world on our property pro portfolio on our site or outside of our property portfolio. Um, but absolutely, we work anywhere and we're going to go into secondary blocks. I know we're getting tight on time. Um, but yes, absolutely. We work anywhere in the world. Um, and those secondary blocks at different price ranges, we also work in. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. The properties that are in our portfolio on our site, they give us something a little bit extra special when your couples check in. Um, so it's a nice benefit working with them, but by no means do we not work with any other properties. Perfect and amazing. And with that, take it right into the secondary room blocks. Yeah, so secondary room blocks, we get this request from most couples, unless it's a buyout, um, which sometimes we don't need to do a secondary block, but sometimes the property, um, uh, property host of the wedding is going to be, you know, this amazing five-star property that's $950 a night. And that's great for some of the guests, but definitely not all of the guests. Um, so we will always find a secondary accommodation option in a different price range. Um, but something to understand is a lot of times we hear from couples um, or their planners directly and say, we want to have three, four different room blocks in three or four different price ranges. So that's something that we do not suggest. Um, it's gonna create a lot of confusion for your guests. Um, it's gonna be a lot of bookkeeping, bookkeeping for the couple because they're gonna be on the hook for all of these different room blocks. And that creates also um, a situation that we like to avoid by only doing two room blocks. And that is being on the hook for all of that money. Um, because if you're giving so many options to your guests, your guests may communicate with other guests of the wedding, everybody might just end up staying at one property. Um, so it's best to just offer two properties. One, either the host hotel, if, it's, if your wedding is being hosted at a hotel, um, in that higher price range, and a secondary property close by in a lower price range. And we're not looking for two different hotels, $50 per night difference in rate. I'm talking about a significant price difference that can really uh, speak to each of your guest types. Um, so it's definitely important. Um, like I said, we do not encourage more than two blocks. And if there is a guest in that middle range, so we would encourage them to book a higher category at the lower property, um, or if they really want to splurge, then they can go for the host property. Um, and what we also see happen is couples allocating some funds to some of their guest rooms, which is simple to do, um, can absolutely accommodate that. And that's a nice way to have more guests stay at the host property. Uh, but generally, we are going to source two properties, um, one in the higher category for the couple and those maybe friends of the family, um, and then one at a lower price range. Um, but something also to keep in mind is a, a great benefit of working with Wetaways, if I may say so, um, is that we are not just Googling hotels near and then the host hotel, um, and then choosing that hotel to get a room block at. No, we do our R&D. Um, it's very, very important for us to research the different hotels. Um, and for that reason, we don't, while we will work all over the world with non wetaways property hotels, we don't work with everybody. We won't work with certain B&Bs and some, you know, tiny properties that, ha that don't adhere to global standards um, mm -hmm. because we just cannot put guests in that situation. Um, so we're always looking for the best option, which doesn't necessarily mean it's the next hotel over, but it's absolutely within a very close driving radius. So nobody, you know, is waiting 45 minutes to get to where they need to go. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, ready. I think I'm going to take over here because we're just about to wrap up. I have to say that it is uh, such an amazing discovery to listen to you share all this information, Pamela. It's rich and helpful and 
Wedaways is all about adding value and wedding planners are collaborative by nature, bringing in all the vendors to make the productions happen. So working with wedding planners is such a natural lead in for us as a travel company. Kristen, we love having you and we can't wait for parts two and three, which take place on Thursday, July 16th and Thursday, July 30th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We look forward to having you there. There'll be one lucky wedding planner that's going to win the three nights and four days at the beautiful Viceroy Resorts, whichever one that you choose. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you both very much. This was phenomenal. You See you soon. See you in two right, weeks. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.